Hi everyone, Adrian from Audio Excellence. So I finally had a chance to do a comparison between the PS Audio DirectStream DAC Mark II and the uh, um, MSB Discrete DAC. So let me just um, preface everything by uh, giving some details. The PS Audio DirectStream DAC is absolutely superb. I love it. We've um, gone through two or three demos already. We haven't been able to keep them in stock. As a matter of fact, we, we keep buying them, and every time we get them in, we sell them because at the price point that it sells at, I can't think of anything else as good. Now, I haven't heard everything on the market, so understand that. Um, but I'm truly amazed at how good it is. And it promises to be even better because as as the uh, designers continue to evolve with the product, you can get firmware updates. So um, anyway, you can see the, uh, the review that we did. The guys will link the uh, review below in the description box. The MSB Discrete is and has been my favorite DAC um, in the 12, 13,000 US dollar range. As a matter of fact, let me give you the pricing as well. The PS Audio is 79.99, so 8,000 US dollars, and the MSB is 12.5 uh, US dollars. For the longest time and continues to be, I haven't heard um, a better DAC in that price uh, for where, where the MSB competes in. And we've listened to a lot of different ones. As a matter of fact, some of the most popular and well-known products that you are familiar with, I've I either had samples or I've bought samples or we've had traded in, and the MSB is still my favorite. I'll, I'll talk about what my favorite means, not necessarily to, to everybody, certainly, because this is, alt uh, after all, a subjective hobby of ours. But um, I had the opportunity to bring in a lot of different lines, and I stuck with the MSB for all these years because I couldn't uh, see or, or hear anything better than the discrete, and in fact, throughout the whole range. Um, so I thought it'd be cool to compare the two. Um, now, I compared the MSB for, uh, first with just the uh, standard form that it comes at 12.5, which is a, a standard small power supply with the uh, coax inputs, the SPDIF, I should say, inputs, and then the balanced outputs. Um, I started first with the, well, I used the Lumen P1 as a streamer, um, the Macintosh C12000 uh, preamplifier, uh, used the tube section, and then the Macintosh MC462, and the uh, Sonus Faber Serafino speakers, the latest generation G2. Um, when I listened to first to the PS Audio, it was, it just reminded me how good it is. Everything just sounded so nice, very musical. Uh, you could clearly hear details uh, without without straining. Uh, beautiful soundstage, wonderful depth, um, very nice quiet backgrounds. Again, nothing to really sort of um, desire for more. I, I was just very happy with it. And in fact, after playing uh, about six or seven tracks, I thought, wow, this will be very interesting. I. I I can't imagine that the MSB is going to be any better. So then I connected the MSB up using exactly the same setup, and my eyes and my jaw dropped. I was thinking, wow, it is better, and not just by a little bit, by a substantial amount. I heard even more detail. The layering from front to back in terms of depth was so clearly obvious, even better. Uh, the soundstage got bigger. The images were more defined. You could you could hear more clearly where everything within the soundstage was. Um, the the uh, background noise dropped even more. It was just darker. I, I, if you've never heard that, I don't know how to explain it. You have to hear it for yourself. Um, but more importantly, emotionally, it got even more involving. And again, this was not something that I expected. I truly thought it might be some things would be better in one a, a, with one DAC and, and some other things would be better with the MSB, but not in this case. Uh, the MSB is clearly better and not by a small amount. Uh, I'll give you a couple examples. Um, 
One of the best uh, recordings as far as classical is concerned is uh, the Nutcracker Suite with Ernest Ansame uh, with the orchestra of the Royal Opera House. Um, from the very first note, with the PS audio, you get involved, you, you immediately understand why this is one of the most treasured pieces of recordings that, that audiophiles who know about it love. It's, it's superb, absolutely superb. And then you put in the uh, MSB, and the magnificence of the recording comes through. Uh, absolutely stunning. Just in every way I can think of, the, the layering of the orchestra gets even better. Um, the, the dynamics, micro and macro, got better. Um, it was just, um, wow, <laughs> best way I can put it. Um, and then as far as the emotional aspect of it, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Eva Cassidy. Most of you know who Eva Cassidy is. I first heard of her back in, I want to say, in the in the mid-90s. I was at um, uh, a bookstore called uh, Chapters in Toronto, actually in Richmond Hill. At the time, actually, no, they had already bought over, so it was Indigo. And back then, they used to sell CDs. And I was browsing a bunch of books, and suddenly I heard this beautiful music over the PA, and I thought, this is absolutely stunning whoever is singing she sings so beautifully even through um regular pa speakers you know in this big huge um uh, store let me go and ask so i went to the counter and asked who's playing and she showed me this uh, cd cover and i thought i gotta buy this so i bought it and this is eva cassidy and i brought it back to the store and immediately played it and i immediately fell in love and and then from that moment on, I started playing that CD for a whole bunch of people. And and then a couple, three years later, when I went to a consumer electronics show in Las Vegas, I saw that people were playing it. So I was actually quite gratified to, to uh, see that. What's fascinating is uh, Eva Cassidy uh, wasn't popular uh, outside of her um, hometown in Washington, D.C., um, the rest of the, the, the U.S. really didn't know much about her. The rest of the world certainly didn't. Um, she passed away at the age of 33. Um, and sadly, shortly afterwards, she became much more popular after her death. The BBC started playing some of her music and then the huge uh, um, uh, outpouring of um, listeners started calling the station and saying, who's this and where can we buy her CDs and so on. And that's when she really got very popular in England. Uh, if you've never heard her, please um, search her out. I played uh, Fields of Gold. Uh, the, the, the song was originally written by uh, Sting and made popular by Sting, but I find that I relate to her version even more. Um, and I'll just read a couple of uh, lines of the lyrics for you and, and explain why. Will you stay with me? Will you be my love among the fields of barley? We'll forget the sun in his jealous sky as we lie in fields of gold. I never made promises lightly, and there have been some that I've broken. But I swear in the days still left, we will walk in fields of gold. The last two sentences, when I listened to it, were even more poignant to me and, and caused me to break out in tears because I realized that um, she died at such a tender age of 33. She was just starting to reach, for many of us, her prime, and yet, unfortunately, she was cut short. Um, listening to the PS audio with this song, I heard the lyrics listening to it through the MSB, I felt the lyrics. And perhaps that's the easiest way I can describe it. Uh, this is in no way to diminish the PS audio. As I said right at the very beginning, it is one absolutely superb DAC. I, I honestly don't know a better DAC anywhere near its price point. And given that it can be upgraded, and, and I'm sure that Ted Smith and Paul McGowan and the team will continue to do an incredible job of, of bringing you value with the DAC. Um, the MSB, just from a purely emotional and musical standpoint, 
just takes it to a different level. And I found that to be true with all the MSBs. Uh, as you go up in the range, it just draws more and more and more into you so that you get more and more involved in the music. Uh, and that's something that's very unique and special to MSB. So I just want to wrap up by saying, um, if for those of you who stretch to get the PS Audio, uh, don't hesitate. It is absolutely superb. You will love it. Uh, that's my experience, and, and all the clients who bought it, they all feel the same way. Um, for those of you who can stretch, uh, check out the MSB. See what you think and see if you agree with me. And the other thing that's really nice about PSB, uh, MSB, I should say, is that um, there are, they are scalable in, in design. You can get um, a bigger power supply for it. You can get two small power supplies if you want uh, to keep the budget a little bit lower. The factory will also take back the units at full U.S. retail and, and upgrade, uh, allow you to upgrade to the next series up. So all you do is pay the difference. Factory is just fantastic that way. So anyway, that's my uh, conclusion. Um, I'd love to see and hear your comments. Um, write them in the comment section below and uh, look forward to talking with you about another topic next time. Adrian from Audio Excellence. See you. Bye-bye.